Tonight, Andy Riffle does some verbal somersault and tries to convince me that he deserves a 10 on the land development deal. Does he deserve a 10? Or will I burst his anguin bubble? This is PUC Cast. <laughs> Tonight we have Andy Riffle with us, who is a senior in mathematics and also the, according to this, the SAP resident. Excuse me, SA president this year. Thank you, Andy. Sorry about the bad joke. <laughs> um, first of all, what is the Anguin bubble? Well, uh, about two decades ago, uh, there was a parcel of land that was designated to be uh, saved for development later. And while PUC never kind of used that land to develop, until just recently, there have been some, uh, some projects proposed, such as the Eco Village. And now that we're, we're wanting to develop this land, uh, there have, there's been some opposition that's been trying to stop it from happening. And so uh, this urban bubble has, uh, they've been attempting to pop this urban bubble. And we met recently with some Napa County supervisors and such, uh, who have been kind of you know trying to find out well what is the urban bubble exactly? They're still you know defining well, this. Wh where where right. is this urban bubble? Is it well, Mill Valley? Is it the Back Forty? Is it Area Fifty One? Where 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 is it? The the urban bubble is Angwin, and um, oh. well it's 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 part of Angwin. You can see it on a map. They have maps that they show in all these meetings, and uh, it Visual includes aids. it includes the PUC campus and some other land nearby uh, that they would like to develop. All right now. Last year, there was a lot of talk about Triad, and tell me a little bit more about Triad. Well, what is Triad, and what does that have to do with the whole thing? Um, Triad, as I understand, is a developing company, and uh, we are in the, in the process of making a deal with Triad mm -hmm. um, to do this eco-village. Uh, when they first presented last year, uh, we didn't get a whole lot of information, and some students kind of didn't understand exactly what was going to be happening, and so uh, rumors started circulating. And uh, that was created some problems, um, such as uh, oh, I'm trying to think here. Um, I do that all the time. Yeah. I, well, th there were rumors circulating and just some negative feedback. Okay. They were thinking that they wanted, like you know, that PUC was just selling out and that this was going to like turn into some metropolis. I don't know. Not like PUC's anywhere near that, but. Um, I wouldn't yeah. mind if it turned into metropolis. Yeah. <laughs> Would you be Superman? <laughs> I'd probably be Aquaman. Anyway, um, okay, well, you started to get ahead of me and mention that there was a meeting uh, yesterday. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yes, uh, there was a meeting yesterday. Um, we, uh, okay, this meeting was an important meeting because they're, okay, th they've been having these hearings where. They? they okay, they sorry. Uh, Napa County has been mm. having some hearings. And yesterday's meeting, I believe, was the first one where not only were the supervisors present, but also those of the steering committee. They're, they're part of the planning commissioners. So the, the influential doing, people. Yes, All right. that are doing this general plan um, for what's going to be happening here in Angwin and, and whatnot. And this meeting had several agenda items, but the one of um, most relevance to us right. was that of the Angwin urban bubble. Mm -hmm. And about the first 30 minutes or so, they talked about some other agenda items like um, for example, open fire pits outside and whatnot, and we heard some interesting uh, people present on that. Really? And, um, hmm. Yeah, it, uh, it was a very, very fun meeting. Um, I bet. And uh, then for two hours, we had uh -huh. two lines of people going up to speak, um, both in favor and against uh, the urban bubble. And so President Osborne started off, and he was the first one to speak, and then someone spoke um, in favor of, or against the urban bubble, in favor of changing, uh, redevi redefining the urban bubble or PUC not developing. And we went, just went back and forth. And several of our professors went up there to speak. A few students spoke. Um, I was one of the students who spoke. All right. um, and uh, there, it was a very interesting meeting. There were lots of uh, points being shared. And it was nice for us to be able to hear um, from the opposition's mouths what their arguments are because sometimes we aren't able to really hear that 
you know, here at PUC because we're, we're not able to, you know. Let me, let me stop you right there. there. Opposition you're talking about, if I'm not, uh, uh, not incorrect, is uh, save, P, uh, save PUC, is it? Save Rural Angwin. Save Rural Angwin. Yeah. What? Well, okay, Save Rural Angwin uh -huh. has this, they, they would like for Angwin to stay rural. Uh, they are afraid that with this development plan that Angwin's gonna become urban, and I'm not sure what exactly they see are the problems of it, but some, some ideas that I stipulate are maybe they see, you know, Angwin, if it becomes too city-like, it'll have, you know, worldly influences and whatnot. For example, right now... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. If, if, if they are con concerned about worldly influences, from what I, I know of these people, most of the people who live in Angwin are not... Adventist. So this whole idea about worldly influence is that is that really? Well, I don't know. I, I see a bit of a disconnect there. Well, there's a mixed group um, of Angwin villagers. Uh, right. There's there are those who are um, very traditional Adventists that want to keep PUC um, as Ellen White had originally planned it, and she had this land planned out for farming, which we aren't which isn't as profitable anymore. And the only agriculture that really is profitable here is grapes, which we're not gonna be growing wine. Um, there are also those who um, are not Adventist and they think that the heart, like I remember one of the speakers on Tuesday said that the heart of, the, of Angwin is its agriculture. And I don't know if he just meant the heart of Napa Valley, but he said the heart of Angwin is, is its agriculture. And he thinks that we should have our, um, you know, our own wineries and whatnot, that we should have our own. All right, because I was going to ask, if, if we aren't using it for something productive like wineries, which are prolific through the valley, yeah. what would we use it for? Um, yeah, I mean, if, why develop the land if it's just going to still sit there? Yeah, if we're not able to develop the land, um, it would be designated as agricultural. And winery would be one of our only options. I'm not sure what our other options would be, but they'd be very limited. All right, well, 